So it's grafting day today and um, this is my queenless colony. Uh, it's a day after I had planned on grafting um, for two reasons. One was because if you recall from my video, my previous video when I was making up this queenless colony, I actually put in two frames that contained eggs, a small amount of eggs, mostly pollen. Um, and that's the reason why I put those frames in, because I wanted the pollen. But um, obviously the eggs leave me at risk of uh, this colony creating queen cells uh, out of those eggs. And instead of focusing their attention on uh, the grafts that I'm going to put in, uh, they might uh, divert their attention to some of the queen cells that they're going to build out of the eggs uh, that were in those two frames. So I left them for an extra day. I'm hoping now that I can see some emergency queen cells been drawn on those frames and that I will cut them down and I'm going to insert my grafts. The second reason was the timelines just suited me a little better just to delay it by one day as well. So we might just have a little chat about the tools I use. This is generally my kind of queen rearing uh, colony marking box and so on. Um, so where I keep all my little bits, but essentially I'm only going to be using two tools and one is a bee brush. Now I don't often use a bee brush and in fact I would very rarely recommend that you use a bee brush but for queen rearing purposes it's one of those times when I say a bee brush kind of is useful because I prefer not to shake the bees off the frame when I'm getting my grafting frames or when I'm looking at my grafts to check for acceptance. So I, I tend to use a brush just ever so gently to move the bees out of the way. Uh, bees do get a bit cranky when they're brushed with a bee brush. Second tool I'm going to use is uh, a Chinese grafting tool. Uh, there are several different types, but I find you know the Chinese grafting tool is generally better. Well, for me, I, I can manage it better than say this um, kind of more traditional stainless steel type grafting tool. Um, so. That's really it. Uh, and then my grafting frame, which is already in the colony. Now, I'm obviously, I've, I put the grafting frame in, I put it in the day I made up this queenless colony. So I'm hoping that the frame isn't uh, completely drawn up with brace comb. But if you can see the colony there, it's quite strong. It's not maybe as strong as I had intended it to be or hoped it would be, but it's it's reasonably strong um, and it'll certainly manage uh, 12 grafts, or sorry, 24 grafts, no problem. So we don't want to upset the colony too much, there's no need, I don't really, I know my two frames where I have uh, the eggs on. Now these bees will be a bit cross because they are queenless. But uh, funny enough, when they start drawing queen cells, they kind of calm down a bit. And as you can see, they are actually, they've drawn a bit of comb here. They've drawn these cells out. Here we already have a few emergency cells drawn. If you can see them. Okay, and one of my JZBZ cups has fallen out of the bar so that's not ideal but we'll press that back in but you can see on this frame they're starting to draw out two uh, emergency queen cells um, and a few actually another pocket of them up in this corner here so you know we want to be able to cut them down now and make sure that the bees have no options to draw cells to draw queen cells So, because these will destroy our chances. So we've two, three, four there. That's very good. Another one here. Let me check this side. This side, as far as I can remember, had no eggs on it and it doesn't. It's all pollen and been backfilled with nectar. There's still a few eggs on the frame that haven't hatched. So they are going to be a little bit of a concern, but again, when I'm checking for my acceptance rate, um, when I'm checking my acceptance, there's something, 
just preventing me there a bit of resistance putting the frame down so I don't know what that is no oh, another JZBZ cup it's the only thing with the wooden frame and I'm gonna leave this frame out actually because um, yeah with the JZBZ cups uh, on a wooden frame you see the JZBZ cups are designed to sit into a plastic frame that has specific slots designed for them um, this is kind of a wooden frame with a groove cut in it the groove obviously expands over time and we can see that the bees have been working on these cells so um, Come on, girls. Now, there's a clap of thunder there. That's not ideal. It mustn't really forecast today, I don't think. Um, so, let me just see. How many did I, I didn't, I lost none from the top bar. And I'm just going to give these a shake now, because if we lose cups from it on a shake like this, uh, they're not really secure enough. Yeah. So these bees have been working on these cups. I'm going to take my bars off. They have them polished up with a little bit of comb on the rims of them but you can see the cups there and uh, there's no need to insert the frame just yet but what I'm going to do is insert uh, one frame in ready um, when I have the graft taken from the colony. Right, smoker is not playing ball. You can see here that the bees have built a little bit of, or put a bit of wax around the rims of the cups. Um, it's not something, you know, it's not ideal I uh, just have to be careful when I'm inserting the graft but the bees will alter that when there's the graft is in and, and the larva is there um, so I'm not too concerned about it now I just want to go through the next frame then just to see and make sure that there's no um, that there are no emergency cells on it Now, so this colony isn't quite, uh, we'll say, hopelessly queenless yet, because there's still eggs and larvae that's young enough on these two frames. But I'm hoping that when I give them the grafts, that they will then divert their attention to uh, the grafts because obviously the grafts would be hanging exactly like a queen cell should or would do and there are no none on that side anyway you just see oh look at all those a whole pocket of them there see that this colony is going crazy you know I move those bees now out of the way and you get to see them Look at that. So this colony is just dying to rear cells. They're obviously rearing the wrong ones. We could potentially use these, um, you know, if we wanted, but emergency cells just don't, you know, the queens obviously, um, 
some of them might be dubious so we just cut these cells out these will clean up all that royal jelly and I think we've got them all it is vitally important that you make sure you don't leave any of these cells behind that have started so there you can see we've cut them away so now I'm going to go to my um, colonies double check that I'm going to be rearing from and we will do our grafts no, and girls don't want to squish any of you now so one of the reasons obviously why you don't want um, you know emergency cells developing is because you uh, you run the risk obviously that those cells will be you know a day or two older than your than your actual grafted cells and then you stand uh, or you you run the risk then of losing all your grafted queen cells from your selected breeder queens um, and the other reason obviously or well maybe it's not so obvious is that you need the bees to have their full attention on the grafts so you want as much royal jelly pumped into uh, these grafts the grafts that you're going to put in uh, have them swimming in royal jelly to make the best queens biggest fattest juiciest queens now I bumped some bees there that's the difficulty with working with big colonies you bump bees the bees get excited I can hear the thunder peeling in the background there you see how the bees come up then and they just uh, to get the strange scent from your hand they come they jump on it as you're putting the frame in but uh, and of course there's royal jelly then on my fingertips as well and my hive tool so when I put the grafts in you know they will actually calm down um, maybe not immediately but uh, essentially you know they don't feel so hopeless um, as right now I've destroyed all their queen cells so they're kind of and it's very quick for them to kind of get that feeling that they're hopelessly queenless so that's uh, the queenless colony sort of taken care of uh, I know that there are no emergency queen cells in there at present uh, you know tomorrow yes they could certainly draw down after I put my grafts in tonight but I'm hoping obviously that the attention will sort of focus on the grafts um, and uh, so now I'm going to go to my breeder colonies obviously I, I, I've said uh, already that I've had two I have two kind of in mind um, that I'm going to graft from so one is the queen I grafted from last year and another one is the queen that uh, uh, from that was bred last year and uh, she's showing great promise so I'm sort of maybe been a bit premature with my decision on picking her but um, she, you know she's performing very well so far so I'm just happy to, to graft off her and um, we'll see how it goes so I'm going to get cracking on this because uh, we don't have too much time if that thunder is going to get closer and the bees are obviously going to be a bit narky so let's get to it this is my breeder queen from last year uh, she's a very good performer she's uh, well I think three years old now at this stage um, this colony I've never known this colony to actually swarm to generally supersede the queens they always usually build up quite large um, now this year was a little bit of an exception 
she started off a bit slow but she is three years old so you know she's in her third year minimum uh, before that I didn't I didn't actually mark her so um, but I had eyed this colony up so you know and nine times out of ten when I opened this colony they're gentle so they're the kind of traits you want she's a great honey producer I usually get you know up to seven supers the year now I should explain myself there because I have supers on colonies for the whole year I don't take the spring crop off I don't really have the facilities to do that so um, my supers are generally on for the whole year um, uh, for the whole season I should say and uh, this colony has always produced or this line shall we say has always produced seven uh, or more supers every year now as I said this year she's been a bit slow off the mark but I'm still going to graft off her because I still just like the way um, you know she performs so I want to now try and find uh, a frame that has the right age of larvae Last year, even though I had her marked as my breeder queen, I still did a Demeray split off her a couple of times actually, twice. Um, and so, you know, it was quite hard on her, uh, which is probably a silly thing to do, uh, you know, just when you have a good breeder queen that you have marked out. But I suppose last year, over the previous few years, I had kind of, my numbers had slipped back. I was. We were building a house and um, I kind of not really, um, we had a young family, we were starting a young family, so I kind of not really put as much attention into the bees as I should have and uh, my numbers slipped way back. So last year I was really pressed for resources. So. I kind of uh, pushed every colony to the limit in terms of getting splits off to build my numbers back up. Um, you know, so quite hard on her generally. Now just to show you actually while I'm here, uh, this is a frame that I use uh, starter strips on and um, you'll see that the bees built down worker comb down to about halfway down the frame and then uh, mm -hmm. used drone, uh, built drone comb for the rest of the way down. So mm -hmm. I know it's one of the ones I use starter strips on because I have, mm -hmm. um, you can see the bamboo stakes there. Unfortunately, I didn't really check the weather. I just knew it was going to be sunny. This lady is catching up and her population is still very small. She was well behind um, earlier on uh, in the year, about two or three weeks ago. But you can see she's spread out. This is a 12 frame box. So, she, I mean, the three frames I've pulled out there now have had brood, albeit some of it drone brood. So, we might struggle to find what we're looking for here. But bearing in mind, we're only looking for, I only need 12 from this column. She has that all laid up with eggs. The rest of it's solid brood. So you want, uh, you know, we'll say it's four day old, but essentially it's larvae that's hatched that's one day, one to one and a half day old. And when you, uh, the larvae that you want, 
really it should ideally be swimming in the royal jelly worker uh, brood gets fed royal jelly you know on that first into the second day or so and that's the larva that you want so in an emergency situation bees could potentially draw um, queen cells out of any uncapped larvae um, you know but for the purposes of grafting you want it to be the youngest possible um, larvae that you can find now, it appears we might struggle to find what I'm looking for here I really need now normally you know it, it, of course if you know if I was doing more than say 12 grafts I would have inserted in a, an empty frame maybe three days or four days mm -hmm. beforehand um, <clears throat> and again nine times out of ten the Queen will go to that frame and uh, lay it up Sorry now girls, I think I might have bumped one there and they're a little unhappy with me. This queen has no problem laying up frames of brood. Um, sure our queen isn't on this frame because I don't really want to brush her off yeah I've definitely found what I'm looking for I should be able to pull 12 out of this now so again this is where you know uh, I have a potential for bees getting across with me, but I'm um, going to brush these bees off okay. because I don't want to shake the larvae. All right, you want to uh, be as gentle as possible with the larvae, even at this stage. Okay, so just given the fact that it's tundry as well these bees do have potential to be quite annoyed with me but so far so good definitely no queen there and if you shake them into the hive they won't you know they'll just settle back down in there and here we have our frame now I just do my grafts outside I don't uh, bring them into the workshop or anything uh, you know you have to be quick and you don't want your larvae drying out or anything obviously in the in the heat of the sun and that it can be you know but the quicker you can move the better now, so I'm going to try and show you what I'm looking for here I thought I had my, my uh, lamp with me, but I don't seem to have it. So that I could show you. But you might be able to see young larvae down there. 
there's some eggs but some very small larvae so that's what we have to try and remove some of this here in the middle here is and you see there's a bee hatching that larva is too way too old obviously um, but it's the smallest larva you can see and generally you'll see it kind of beside the eggs okay and you still want it in that C shape lying in a, a pool of jelly if possible so now I'll try and show you the first one when I get it out so not ideal I, I, I definitely thought I had my my lamp with me that I could see um, so I must have put it down somewhere And what you want to do is you want to go in the back of the cell behind the C cup shape of the of the larvae and scoop it up. There's one there, I see. Oh that's when I pull out these frames I can see plenty of larva before I take it out and then when I actually go to remove it I can't seem to see the ones I want see it there so you can see that uh, not sure if you can see that so you can see it there on the tip of the of the tool so we're going to drop that in and there's the second one okay tiny so that's our cell bar grafted up. I have one cell there where the larva is on the side wall so I'm not holding out too much hope for that one but uh, I'm going to put these in before they dry out anymore and let's uh, see how we go. So we're at the Queen's colony now and I'm going to insert this uh, these grafts into the frame and drop them in to the colony and then the bees can actually be starting on these uh, while we're grafting the other 12 from our other breeder queen So now this lady is doing her job for now and uh, we'll come back again in a couple of days time and do another graft from her. Once the larva is swimming in royal jelly it's generally still at the right age. It's very much easier to pick up
You want the larvae that's in a C shape. Swimming in as much jelly as you can find. You know, the more jelly that's in it, the better. show you so you can see there's some comb built there I'll just show you here or some wax uh, placed on the cells that's from where the bees were working but you can see the larvae down at the bottom there Okay, so we're going to go and place this in our graft bar. So we'll place this into our cell builder colony now. We'll just remove our graft frame gently. And you can already see the bees working on these the graphs that I put in a few moments ago. So everything is done when you're grafting in slow motion as it were. Nice and gentle. And we slot our graft bar in to the frame. Sorry, I'm doing this maybe off camera. I'll just show you I'm slotting it in here as gently as possible. Don't want to disturb those grafts. Now, and we now drop our frame back in and we'll check in 24 hours time. That will be a fair indication as to what the acceptance rate is going to be because we should see a rim of wax and the cells being filled with royal jelly. Okay. Now we can tighten everything up in the box. Might just give them a little puff of smoke actually to bring them down. So we're not crushing any bees. So I don't know if my mic is picking up that thunder, but it's getting, I can see the cloud is getting closer. So I'm not really sure if that's a, <laughs> I've never grafted before uh, 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 in thunder. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that's going to cause a, a problem or from an acceptance point of view. <laughs> But here goes at any rate, 
first craft of 2024. Let's raise queens, bees. So this colony should be, um, you know, good enough to uh, rear at least a second batch without kind of, um, you know, putting in more bees or young bees. It may even be good enough to rear a third batch. But what happens is when you're putting in so many cells, the um, young bees, the ones that uh, create the royal jelly or the bee milk, uh, they be kind of they kind of become exhausted, you know, um, because in the grand scheme of things, a colony will only raise, you know, uh, seven or eight, ten queen cells, um, and uh, you have young bees obviously coming on all the time, and uh, your worker brood itself only takes you know a very small amount of um, royal jelly at the very start of its life uh, when it hatches from an egg but these uh, queen cells will be fed royal jelly right up basically until they're almost uh, capped and you know you will see these cells completely pumped with the JZBZ you can see through uh, the cell and you can see where it's it's like full of royal jelly um, and so you know it exhausts the bees uh, that are made that are creating the bee milk so that's where you have to kind of then um, sort of replace the young bees uh, on a regular basis if you're going to raise more and more uh, queen cells for me i'm possibly only going to raise maybe two batches this year might do a third batch it depends um, but that's really all I, I would be able for out of this colony and maybe later on in the season I might do another batch or two to replace some of the queens before winter um, you know just for an, an autumn replacement of my overwintering colonies. So it's a, a day and a half since I grafted my cells and I want to check them just for acceptance um, I'm just taking this brief opportunity the last two days have been well yesterday and today have been very bad it's quite cold now at the moment I'm just going to do this hopefully without smoke not get lit up by these bees but we just want to check for acceptance good girls These are nice and calm, which is a good sign. Well, they're not too bad. Oh, I'm pressing on one there. Easy does it, girls. Easy does it. Plenty of stores coming in here. They're really drawing out the comb, that's a great sign. We want a flow coming in so that the bees will feed these cells. <laughs> And already on the top bar, I can see that we have acceptance on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. On the bottom bar, we have acceptance on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. Well, that's not too bad. I'll just show you. Let's see if we can get a close up of that. 
Lovely. Oh, that's not ideal. So these bees have done their job. 